Daily broadside day 556. Saturday, two days ago, was in everything that I can remember in the last, like, let's say 30 years or so, had to be the most frustrating day of my entire adult life. Like, there's no comparison. I got up at the crack of dawn. I was out of the house at 7 o'clock. I didn't get home until 8 o'clock. And for that 12, 13 hour period, every single thing, every single thing, with the exception of the gyro that I had for lunch, was fine. Every single thing fought me, was against me, tried to screw me, succeeded in screwing me, uh, all that stuff, right? Now, I gotta tell you, uh, you know, I've, I've come a long way in my life from how I've handled stuff when I was younger and whatnot, but, but here is, here is, um, Here's how I typically handle stuff in my quote unquote adult manner. When something like that happens. Like let's say you're uh, you know, you're working on a car and the head of a bolt shears off and now you've got to either weld a bolt onto the stud and try to hope it holds while you torque it out or you've got to drill it out or you've got a bigger problem on your hands. If you've ever been in that situation and you hear that, you know, that sound when that bolt breaks, it's just a great day. It just makes for a great day. But when stuff like that happens, here's typically my go-to. I will, uh, all or some of these in no particular order, but I will cuss at the world. I will want to immediately punch or break something. Uh, not a person, but you know, a wall. I've broken knuckles and fingers in the past. I've cut my hands on many things because that is my immediate frustration venting itself from my body. Uh, or I just want to smash something. And, um, and and then I curse the universe. And then about 15 or 20 seconds later, I have blown up all the steam I need and it's time to get back to solving the new problem that we have. And that's typically my go-to and it has served me well. Um, <laughs> um, you know, some people might say, well, it's not very healthy to be cussing and punching stuff when you get mad. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, that's better than punching a person or cussing a person. I find that I talk to myself quite regularly when I, especially when I'm alone, and I, it helps me work through problems. So, and you know, like I'd break a bolt, and this would be me. I would be like, "All right, well, that's great. This is after the uh, 15, 20 second uh, purge, uh, purging period. After that has subsided, then it then it becomes me talking to myself like." All right, well, here we are. Uh, we've got a new bolt. This is a new problem. Let's figure out how we're going to do this. And I'll, I'll talk to myself, uh, like hopefully most of you do, so you don't think I'm a complete weirdo, but I, um, and maybe I am, I don't know. But I find that vocalizing your inner frustrations and working through things, um, that is how I solve problems. And I'm a very good problem solver. You know, I, I find workarounds for stuff. And it's weird because as negative, negative as I become immediately after a bad incident happens, I just want to just, you know, the frustration. But once that's out, like half a minute later, I'm the most positive person in the world. It's like, all right, we're gonna fix this. Oh, something's come up that wants to challenge me today and let's see what happens. But here's what happened on Saturday. I bet I had a series of those things every 20 to 40 minutes, all freaking day. In fact, like I said, lunch was the only respite from the living hell that I found myself in Saturday. Like I just, at one point, I you know I want to give up. I just want to get in my truck and, and go home and be like, we'll do this another day because obviously the universe hates me today. And I said that I vocalized that at one point. Like, why is the universe hating me today? What have I done to make this uh, karma thing uh, happen today? Because I felt like. It was a good week. I didn't really uh, do anything that would warrant all this nonsense that's being thrown my way and I'm having to shuck and jive and block and parry all this crap that's coming my way, but it happened. And again, I found that in my older years, I just, I find a way to laugh through it after again, the initial onslaught of frustration has been vented and purged from my system because that just exists. I'm a very intense person. I am a very loud, boisterous, uh, obnoxious can it say a uh, person at times and that's just my my way of handling stuff but then the universe kind of writes itself and this is what I mean by that so my son is hours away at college and he came home last week and he had an issue with his truck and we didn't have a lot of time to look at it but I diagnosed it as possibly being a slave cylinder on his clutch was going bad 
because his clutch was just, it wasn't engaging. It just felt weird. Like it was, you could drive it fine, shift it normally, all that, but there was something in the play of the clutch that wasn't right. Well, the system is tied into the brake system and I checked everything and I didn't think to look at what the mechanic found today. It just didn't occur to me. Um, so he takes it to this guy, just finds a, a couple people because neither, again, our schedules aren't working. I don't have time to go up there. I had to go up there his freshman year uh, one like fall Sunday morning and put a, a pulley and change the alternator and the pulley and uh, I mean it was like I ended up putting all the pulleys on just replaced them all and I'm doing this in like the freshman parking lot and just you know packed up all my tools and went up there and did it and that worked out I mean it was not what I'd planned to do that Sunday but you know it's better than I, I can't stand taking stuff for things like that and paying somebody to do it when I can just take some time out of my day and knock it out but in this case, the schedule's not working. I got stuff to do, he's got stuff to do, and we can't do it. So he takes it to this random guy, calls around to a couple places, and I said, just get him to flush the fluid and look at the slave cylinder, and if it needs replacing, just throw a new one on there. It's not that big a deal. I mean, the system's already bled anyway. And so he goes to this guy, he calls me, he's like, hey, he thinks it's just the master cylinder's falling apart, you know, it's failing, you know, and uh, he tightened up some lines on the master cylinder and it feels brand new again he's like but it's at its wits end as far as how much you can how much more you can tighten it so i was like all right cool well don't drive it any more than you have to i said get it home you know like next weekend and we'll put a master cylinder on it and i thought to myself i said so what what did he charge you he's like uh he's like he, he wouldn't take anything he's like it took him like 15 minutes to look at it and figure it out and then he thinks that's what it is and all this crap and i was like i said well did you offer him money he's like yeah i said well go give him 50 dollars because you know that that's time that he still took away from other customers and i love the fact that you know general contractors mechanics car dealers there's a, a lot of people you can find in this world that as a whole generally speaking have got some some shady business doings let's just say and it's really nice that you can just randomly find one in the yellow pages or google or whatever however he found this guy that's just a sincere you know by the book you know not gonna screw especially in a college town right you know how many college kids you could screw over uh yeah you need a pressure plate and a new clutch and a slave cylinder and blah, 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 blah. it could be you know four thousand dollars when you're done with it but instead he charged him nothing fix the problem or put a band-aid on the problem until you know we can get it fixed properly and i'm like you know that it, it sucks that it, you even have to discuss this as a thing that this isn't more commonplace um but i love that those people still exist because that's how i run my business that's how i love when people run their business quit screwing people over promise deliver what you can promise and if you can't deliver it then don't promise it i mean it's as simple as that and and don't you know make a living charge money but don't don't gouge people and take advantage of their ignorance because like i said a few weeks ago most people have no idea how cars work and you could tell them that you know their blinker fluid is low and they're going to give you 120 dollars to top it off and it's nice to know that those people again exist so i am heading out into my day which again started very early i'm gonna go do some fun stuff today and hopefully the world doesn't try to unzip its pants urinate on my head. Hey, giddy.